Hi there, my name is Gabe Lonetsky and I'm a quantum physicist here at Keysight Technologies and today I'm excited to show you our new quantum key distribution test bed. This is a flexible new solution that allows users to integrate their own hardware and software components to accelerate their own QKD development. Today we're going to show you the hardware as well as the software used for controlling that hardware and then we're going to take a look at some of the performance measurements for characterizing your own QKD system. Let's take a look. Here, we're implementing a DVQKD protocol in which we're generating single photons from Alice and sending those to Bob. It starts with our reference transmitter in which we're optically attenuating a laser source to generate single photons. Those single photons are then sent to a polarization controller and then those polarized single photons are sent to a optical fiber spool, which then gets sent to Bob, which he also has a polarization controller where he's generating his own basis state. Those polarized photons are then sent to two ID Quantique Siegel photon detectors, as well as we have an ID Quantique timing controller for time stamping those photons. We also use a scope for troubleshooting our entire system. And now I'm going to turn it over to David Van Workum, who is an application engineer, and he's going to talk about the Labber control software. Labber is the heart of our QKD experiment. It handles the instrument control and setup. It also provides experimental flow for the QKD experiment. And then finally, it provides analysis of the performance of our system. Here we're looking at the Labber measurement editor. We've already set up a QKD experiment where Alice sends Bob polarized single photons using a BB-84 protocol. On the top left of our screen, we see our instrument drivers and our virtual drivers. These are all written in Python and can be easily modified and added to by a user. There are two important virtual drivers that I want to point out. First is our QKD basis key generator. This randomly selects measurement bases for both Alice and Bob. The second is our QKD data sifter. This takes those randomly generated measurement bases, as well as timestamps from our single photons uh, provided by our time controller, and sifts out the key that was generated by Alice and Bob during the experiment. It then takes that information and provides uh, data analysis on the sifted key. If we look on the right-hand side of our screen, we see our log channels dialog. This allows us to choose our output parameters that we want to log in our log browser. So we're set up to want run a single experiment, and if we press start measurement, we'll get on our way. Here in the log browser, our results can be analyzed. We have a number of different parameters that we can look at. Uh, here on the screen, we see bit errors detected. We see qu uh, quantum bit error rate, or QBER. There's uh, timestamps from our single photons and then also the time between photon detections uh, that occurred during the experiment. Let's take a little deeper look into our quantum bit error rate measurement. We'll see two traces on the screen. The top one is our QBER. Uh, you'll notice one thing is that this is a running QBER measurement. So each time an error is detected or a bit flip between the sifted Alice and Bob data, the QBER pops up and then falls a little bit until another error is detected. The trace below is also a QBER measurement, except this is the QBER after error correction has been applied to our sifted data. So our QKD data sifter virtual driver allows users to implement their own error correction techniques and compare and contrast various techniques to see which one works best in their QKD setup. Finally, a powerful aspect of the Labber design is its ability to loop through an experiment while iterating on an individual parameter or two. In this case, we're going to run that same QKD experiment again, but this time we're gonna iterate on the attenuation level of our faint laser pulses. We're gonna do 21 steps from 10 to 30 dB and run the experiment. We see that Labber is looping through multiple times. So now we can go back to the log browser to see our results. Here we're looking at the photon count from our single photon detectors as we're iterating through the different attenuation levels. So we see as we go up from the bottom from 10 dB on one of our attenuators to 30 dB on one of our attenuators, 
the single photons detected uh, get fewer and fewer, just as we would expect. Thanks for watching this overview of our Keysight QKD testbed. We've taken a look at the hardware, the control software, and key performance measurements of the system. This system offers you the flexibility that you need to accelerate your QKD development.